Springtime is when reservoirs across the American West should be full. This year, as in many years past, they are not. Lake Mead and Lake Powell, the big reservoirs in the Colorado River, have these big white bathtub rings around them, marks left as the water declines. There's less water in the system now than there was 20 and 30 years ago. John Fleck, author of Water is for Fighting Over, has spent decades studying the Colorado River, a crucial source of water in much of the West. The persistence of the drought conditions in the Colorado River Basin, especially, is essentially unprecedented in human history. What is happening, a new study says, is not just a drought, it's a mega drought. It's a pretty dramatic term, mega drought. If they go back in time 500 years or so, there were these phenomenal droughts in terms of both severity and in terms of length. And until recently, those droughts have always been spoken about with almost a mythical type character. Park Williams is lead scientist on research that used tree ring evidence going back 1,200 years to study mega droughts that lasted as long as 40 years. And the drought of the last 20 years has developed the same way the mega droughts did. There is, however, one difference between this long drought and the mega droughts centuries ago. And what we're seeing today is a combination of natural climate variability as well as human-caused climate change. We would have a drought even without climate change, climate change is making it a whole lot worse. So without human-caused climate change, we'd still have a drought, but it wouldn't be as serious as the one that we've actually seen. 75% of the West's water supply begins as snow. You get a big snowpack, you hope it'll fill up your reservoirs. With climate change, it doesn't fill them up nearly as much as it would have without the warmer temperatures. In the mountains above Boise, Idaho, scientist Hans Peter Marshall is working to develop better ways to determine how much water there is in the snowpack. So it's becoming more challenging for us to not only predict how much water is going to enter our reservoirs, but also the ability to store that water all the way through the end of the summer for agriculture uh, and water resource purposes. Marshall is part of a NASA project called SnowX, developing remote sensing equipment to get accurate snowpack measurements from space. So one of the big pushes for us to develop a space-borne approach to monitoring snow water resources is because these patterns are changing. So we're really needing a approach that maps the amount of water that's stored within the snowpack. Over the past couple of decades, we've had a few years of drought. And then we sometimes have record snow, record rain, flooding. It looks like the drought is over. The thing that's changing now is that when we do have those wet years, when we do get a good snowpack up in the mountains over the winter, we're seeing less water make it into the rivers and downstream to the farms and the cities and the fish and ecosystems that depend on that water. Planning water use will become even more crucial if indeed the West is in the midst of a mega drought that could last another 20 years or more. For CBS This Morning Saturday, John Blackstone, San Francisco.